So seven reasons why you know, Jesus Christ went to hell. Number one, it was just plainly said by Peter the Apostle. Um, the instructions regarding the Passover lamb, the fact that Christ was our Passover and the Passover had to be burnt. Uh, Jesus Christ soul being the offering for sin and how do you burn the body? You know, you, his body was not burnt. His soul was burnt. The sign of Jonah the prophet and the fact that Jonah said out of the belly of hell cried I. The fact that number five, Jesus Christ was dead and you have to die spiritually as well as physically to, in order to truly die. Number six, Christ descended into the lower parts of the earth before he ascended to heaven. And number seven, the gates of hell will not keep him in there. He prevailed against the gates of hell. So just a couple of closing thoughts. You know, what are some conclusions from this sermon? So, you know, number one is, this is, why is it important? I know at first people think, oh, that sounds weird that Jesus Christ would go to hell. But hopefully you understand now why it's important because he had to do it to fulfill the Old Testament. He had to fulfill the judgment and justice of God uh, for becoming uh, the sin for us. Because of course, uh, Jesus Christ doesn't deserve to go to hell. You know, Jesus Christ was sinless, but if he becomes sin for us, now he does deserve hell, right? Because he, he takes on the sin for us and that's why he had to go there to pay for it. So it's important that he fulfills the Old Testament law. Otherwise, we cannot be saved because our sins have not been paid for. But another thing to think about, it's great. Thank God that Jesus Christ did go to hell because it means we don't have to. That's why we don't have to go to hell because Jesus Christ is our substitute. He did it for us. Thank God for that. And we have something to be grateful for. Number three, it proves that he has power over hell. Right? He has the keys of death and hell. Uh, it just proves that Jesus Christ is the most powerful out there because he's not only the king of life, but he's the king of death as well. He's the king of everything. He's the owner of everything. Owner of heaven, he's also the owner of hell. But it also shows that Jesus Christ, this is my last point, Jesus Christ is an eternal being. Because if Jesus Christ was just a man, how does a man pay for an eternity of hell? But the fact that Jesus Christ was able to pay for an eternity of judgment proves that he was an infinite being. Because you say like, well, wait a second, you know, yeah, okay, he went to hell, but he only went to hell for three days and three nights. And I suppose this is just something that we do have to just build our thinking on from the Bible. Because how can three days in hell pay for an eternity of hell? Well, it can't if Jesus Christ was just a man. But if Jesus Christ was hell, he fulfilled it according to the scriptures, like Jonas, three days and three nights in the well of the belly. He was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Because did, did he have to take three days? It's kind of like creation. Now, God didn't have to take six days, but he took six days to give us a pattern for the working week. That's where we get the seven-day week, six days and then one day of rest. So Jesus Christ didn't have to do it in three days. He could have done it in a second, right? But he did it in three days to fulfill the Old Testament, right? Three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. But it just goes to show that Jesus Christ can fulfill an eternity of hell in three days and three nights. Why? Because he's an eternal being, which proves that he's God. Because only God could do that. Only God could take an eternity of hell because a man would have to be there for eternity.